Hi guys, welcome back to Brew and Build. I've got a small brewing project that I need a little bit of yeast for and I thought rather than use dried yeast for this I'd use a little bit of liquid yeast and I'll propagate it up from a, a bottle of one of my old beers that I've uh, bottle conditioned. Uh, you can propagate yeast from commercial beer so I guess the question is does it taste the same as the commercial beer if you if you do that and that's that's a difficult question to answer uh, some brewers yes it will taste the same or reasonably close because they use either the same yeast um, for bottling as they did for fermentation or possibly they don't add any yeast and maybe they just add priming sugar or, or malt extract or something uh, other brewers will actually use a different yeast for bottling and uh, if you propagate the yeast up from that you will probably end up with more of that yeast than the fermentation yeast and you'll get uh, a vastly different tasting beer. So there's a bit of research needs to be done and there's an awful lot of information on the internet, uh, chat forums and things and you'll quite often find whether a beer is, whether a brewer is using uh, their fermentation yeast or a special bottling yeast. I've got a bottle here, uh, it's got um, a decent layer of yeast in the bottom, there's, there's sort of two or three mil in the bottom of that. Uh, that's a, a really good amount of yeast to use. I'm not going to use this bottle. Um, what, I, what I've got, I've got one of my bottles half empty out there. Um, it's a clear bottle, which will be much better to show you this with. Um, the trick with propagating yeast from a bottle, though, is to start small. If you've got a lot of yeast like this, a few mil in the bottom, then you can probably go to town and put 50 mil, 100 mil of, uh, of, of wort into the bottom of it and it'll take no problem. But if you've got a bottle that there's just a thin, very thin smearing of, of yeast that you can see in the bottom of the bottle, then you're probably going to need to start very small with the amount of work that you put in the bottle, probably 25 mil or so. The problem with going big to start with is uh, if, if you put a lot of sugar and a lot of food in there, but there's not enough yeast to culture that and use it and populate it then that gives the chance for other bacteria or wild yeasts to grow in there. Um, brewing yeast is quite strong, it will tend to dominate wort um, so it will, it will dominate what's in there but if you give it too much it doesn't get a chance to grow. So the bottle I've got out there has got the same as this, it's, it's a couple of mil in it so I'm going to start with 50 mil of wort. Uh, and then we'll build it up from there. So uh, head out to the kitchen now where I'm going to do this and, uh, and we'll start the process. The most important part before we start is to keep everything sanitized. Good idea to spray the bottle with no rinse sanitizer before you even open it. You can see there's a little bit of yeast floating in, uh, sitting in the bottom there. There'll be enough for about 50 mil of work. So we'll make up 50 mil by adding 5 mil of DME to 50 mil of water. We'll stick that on the stove and bring it to a boil. That's really only just to dissolve it and sanitize it. Then pop it in some cold water and we'll bring the temperature down to pitching temperature. Somewhere around 20 degrees will be fine. The funnel I'm using is washed in no rinse sanitizer and we just pour in the cooled wort. Then we need to get plenty of air into this and oxygenate the wort. The yeast cells need oxygen to replicate and uh, the yeast hasn't seen oxygen for quite a long time in the bottle and we've boiled most of it out of the wort while it was in the saucepan. So put the cling film on, give it a really good shake and get that air shaken into it. Once that's done, seal it up with some cling film and put it in a warm place and let it start to ferment. Between 12 and 36 hours later you should start to see little white uh, patches on it and some bubbles forming. That means the yeast is starting to ferment the wort. So now we're going to put in 200ml of wort. 
So we're going to start with 20 ml of DME, 200 ml of water, and we'll repeat the process. Just boil it up, cool it down, uh, sanitize the funnel again, and we'll just pour it, the cool water, into the uh, fermenting yeast now. Exactly the same again, we need to get more oxygen into this, let the cells replicate. So give it a good shake and a good swell. About 36 hours later, we should have really good fermentation and the amount of yeast in the bottom you can see has increased substantially. If we take a real close up of that, you can see it's good white uh, yeast, so it's nice and healthy. So that seems to have gone really well. It's taken three days to get to this stage. I've ended up with about maybe five mil or so of relatively compact yeast in places there. Uh, there'll be a decent amount more yeast sitting up in the foam and if I was to cold crash it in the fridge there'd be a lot of yeast drop out of, of the actual wort itself. So there's quite a lot of active yeast available in there. That's now suitable for putting into uh, a two litre starter or something and that'll do uh, a five gallon batch really well. Uh, obviously if you're doing a lager then you're going to need a bigger starter. You might want to just double this again uh, in the bottle perhaps before sticking it in a starter or just build your starter up. That's, that's obviously up to you. Uh, the key to take away with this is start small and, and build up slowly and you can get yeast from a commercial beer or obviously one of your old beers that, that, that's got yeast if you don't have any uh, dried yeast or liquid yeast available then that's very easy to do. So I hope you've enjoyed this, I hope it's been useful and uh, until next time, life's good, drink more beer.